Hey, what is up, guys? My name is <laughs> I, mean, I just imagine like like a horror movie or something, sneaking up on someone, and then being like, like, Hey, what is up, guys? My name like it's just silent and just out of nowhere. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cherno. We're out here. Got out of town once again. This is going to be a bit of a different video. We're going to be talking about how you can get started making games. So, games, how how do people get started making games? How do I get started making games? It's probably a bit of a different question I might say for a different video, but ultimately I get this question a lot. How does someone who's never had any kind of programming experience, any kind of game experience, how, where do you begin? Now there's just, there's, there's so many like, there's so many answers to this question that it's difficult for me to kind of, you know, attempt to give the best one or the right one because everyone's going to be different. You're going to probably like different things. There are probably different areas of making games that you're all interested in. So it's kind of difficult for me to to say like exactly what you should be doing and what you should do in order to kind of get started with with games because games are, games are massively complicated projects that are worked on by like hundreds of people at times, right? Not necessarily, but a lot of the big ones that people in the beginning, <laughs> people in the beginning always like to kind of aim big and make really big games, really complicated games. And the, the, the fact of the matter is those games, those games that you like that are huge, right? They're gonna have hundreds of people probably working on them. And if you're just by yourself, or if you've got a small team, maybe you've got a few friends and you just wanna start making games with them, like you're probably not gonna have the resources to be able to do something like that like on a scale. So really you should be starting with kind of small games and stuff like that. So that's kind of the first thing that I want you to get into your head, right? You need to be able to start small. You need to kind of, you might not even like making games, right? Like you, I mean, honestly, I thought I, I thought I loved making games, but then I just realized that actually I was more or less interested in the technology behind games. And that's why I currently work as, as an engineer on, on a game engine team, because I love game engines. I love the technology behind games, but games don't interest me as much. So you definitely want to kind of just dip your foot in the water and, and, and find something that isn't too complicated, something small that you can kind of start off with to see if you, if you, if you even like making games, because honestly, you might just get bored of it. It's not. It's not necessarily. It's not necessarily something you want to invest a lot of time in, if you if you find out it's just not for you. All right. So anyway, that's kind of out of the way. Disclaimers and all that kind of stuff about about starting about starting small. But where where do you start, right? So I'm a game engine programmer, right? I work at EA, and I develop the core technology. I develop the game engine, right? So take this from me, right? I love starting from scratch. I love writing all of the code that goes into the game. I love creating the game engine myself. However, the advice I'm gonna give you is don't do that. <laughs> Use an existing game engine. And that's kind of difficult advice to give because again, it's just so close. Like I wouldn't personally follow this advice. The advice that I'm giving you right now is probably not advice I would follow, but that's because I don't like making games that much. I like making engines. So of course I don't want to use a game engine to make a game. What purpose does that serve, right? I would love to just kind of make an engine instead. But if your purpose, if your drive is to actually make a game and finish a game and maybe even ship a game, then you, you, you have to use an existing game engine. It's for someone with like no programming experience, for someone with no experience in game engine architecture or any of like, you know, graphics APIs and stuff like that, for you to begin with making a game engine is gonna take you years and you're probably gonna drop it because you'll be like, I, I'm seeing like, it took me like three months to get a triangle rendering, right? Like it's, it's just not, it's just not feasible. In the future, you might decide actually, you know, I've had a lot of experience making games. I know how games are made. I can kind of move on to maybe starting to integrate my technology using my technology to make games. However, in the beginning, it's gonna be critical for you to see results, right? You want to be able to develop a game and actually see results. If you don't see those results, it's not, nothing's gonna really motivate you as much, right? It's actually seeing, hey, look, I worked for a week and I have this now. I have this to show for it. Whereas a lot of like game engine design, especially in the beginning, I know this because I started that way, right? 
a lot of that kind of game engine design in the beginning is more or less going to be you working for weeks and not really seeing anything or seeing something that you could have done in two seconds. The sun's coming out. Doing something that you could have done in two seconds using a game engine. You know why I love going out here and filming? Because like, check this out. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. Look at that sunset. Look at that. I'm literally, that is what is, literally that is what is in front of me right now. All right, anyway, back to it. So, pre-made game engines, right? The big, the two big choices that you've kind of got are really Unity and Unreal. And those two engines are both extremely capable. They're both, they're both engines that I would like trust right, to produce my game. What I mean by that is when you put a lot of work into a game and maybe you've got people working for you, maybe you've just got friends and you're making a game, you want, you want to use proven technology, right, so that you don't end up having to redo a lot of work. And so Unity and Unreal, I'm just gonna duck here behind this on real quick. And so Unity and Unreal are kind of two technologies that have been around for such a long time that they are stable, right? Now, I could go into my opinions of the two engines um, but really, the only thing I would say is, is use one that maybe people around you are more familiar with. Use one that, that maybe you're more likely to have experience with. You might have already done something for school or for university in Unity, for example, so use Unity, right? It doesn't matter, it's a tool, right? Unless you're gonna start making a very, very specific game or some kind of AAA production. Like, I would not recommend Unity or Unreal for kind of AAA games. Maybe Unreal is kind of feasible, but Unity definitely not. No one uses Unity in AAA games, pretty much. Um, because it's just, it's just not like, <laughs> there are a lot of problems with it. But anyway, the idea is pick an engine that you like, pick an engine that you think that you think you might run into people that use because having people to support you, having people to actually help you out with using the tools is gonna to be something that's really, really important, especially in the early kind of, especially in, in the early kind of hours, I could say, of your actual, like, of your actual experience because the most important thing I would say in the beginning is just finding something that motivates you. If you lose motivation, it's gonna be really tough for you to just be on the grind and keep learning because making games, as I said, is tough. Making games is not something that is easy. No matter if you're using Unity or if you're running, if you're rocking your own engine, it doesn't matter, right? Like, making games is hard. And if you're just getting started with it, you need something to keep motivating you, right? You need to stay motivated. You need to stay disciplined. You need to keep grinding. You need to keep learning. You need to keep doing it. Otherwise, you're just not gonna finish a game, right? Okay, so that being said, to sum up what I've said so far, right, is start small. Make sure you're making some kind of small scale game that you can actually finish. It's a really good idea to make something small. Like, honestly, I'm even talking about something like Snake or maybe Pac-Man or like a game like that, right? Space Invaders, whatever. Make a game like that first to test out the tool set that you're using. So in other words, you just decided to use Unity, cool. So make something small so that you can actually see how Unity works, see what it takes to go from start to finish for a game, right? If you start some kind of complicated 3D game and then you kind of just, I don't know, you, you stop halfway through or you just spend weeks working on just the beginning of the game, you don't know how to make a game, right? You know how to make like some kind of level probably that looks kind of nice graphically. That doesn't even require any programming, right? Like. You, you wanna do something that you can complete because then you can say, I have completed a game, look at my portfolio, I've made this, right? And I know how to actually use every aspect of Unity. I mean, obviously if you're making something like Snake, you wouldn't be using every aspect of Unity. But what I mean is you've used the core aspects that you need, such as you've written scripts, you've set up entities and game objects, you've actually sh you've actually published it, you know how exporting works, you know how assets work, all of that stuff, right? Okay, so start small use an engine, okay? Those are kind of two, two main points that I've made so far. Third one, programming, right? So every game engine requires you to write some kind of code. Unreal has blueprints, which is a little bit different, but it is still a form of programming. It's just kind of visual scripting, right? Visual programming. It's still programming. You're still saying, do this if this happens, and you're still kind of going through logic flows and all of that stuff. It's just a lot of the cases in the, I think the sun's gone, so I can probably stand up now. <laughs> a lot of the cases, the logic is kind of transformed into some kind of visual edit, into some kind of node graph that you can kind of just use to link nodes together and create some kind of visual script. But all of the mathematical stuff, right, like actually doing mathematical equations, it kind of aims to minimize that in the sense of you want to work out a collision between two entities or two game objects or two actors, right? You can do that by just, by just basically scripting, you know, 
entity one dot collides with entity two, and if it returns true, you've got a collision, right? It's supposed to be really easy. That's the whole point of a game engine. It's minimizing that actual low level programming that you might have to experience if you were rocking your own engine or something like that. So with Unity, you would probably be using C Sharp to script. You can use JavaScript or whatever, don't. C Sharp, that's the way to go, because C Sharp is actually a more useful language for games than JavaScript would be, unless you're making web games. Uh, JavaScript is probably going to be more useful for web games. C Sharp, however, I use C Sharp at work all the time because all of our tools are written in C Sharp. So for example, the level editor, you know, any kind of kind of UI, layout edit editors, all of that stuff, they're all written in C Sharp, any tools that we really use. So C Sharp is a very useful language to know. That being said, Unity C Sharp, C Sharp in Unity is very different than C Sharp in the wild or C Sharp kind of for Microsoft desktop kind of applications, right? They're very, very different because, because Unity C Sharp is really just using C Sharp as a scripting language. It's got the mono runtime as well, which is a little bit more limited than Microsoft.NET framework. I mean, it, it includes most of it, but there are some things that are missing. So it is a little bit of a different experience if you're writing code for Unity than if you were just using C Sharp by itself. But that being said, C Sharp is a way better language than JavaScript, way better language than JavaScript. So you're definitely going to want to use that. If you're using Unreal, you're going to have to either use Blueprints or C++. I'd recommend Blueprints to start off with. They're really easy. You'll probably get something up and running faster. Again, Unreal C++ is filled with custom macros and metadata and metaprogramming and stuff like that that really makes it a lot easier and also a lot different than kind of traditional raw, I would say, C++. And so that's why there's going to be a learning curve anyway. If you know C++, if you know C Sharp, you're not going to just be able to pick up Unity or Unreal and actually just rock that, right? It's going to be different. It's, there's still going to be a learning curve. You still need to learn the API and learn to, how, to, how to actually program in those engines. But the cool thing about those engines is they come with both tutorials, they come with excellent documentation and API reference and stuff like that, and they also come with sample projects. So you can actually just boot up a sample project and just, you know, check that out, right? And then you can see exactly how they put it together, you can see exactly how they scripted everything. If you need something, you can just Google it, really. There's so many people on forums and stuff like that. That's what I mean, like, when you're rocking an engine, when you're using an engine that is popular and that isn't your own, right? You're going to have so many resources out there that re literally you can Google your way through making a game. I'm not even kidding. You could have zero programming experience and you could Google your way into making a game because really all you have to do is know how to follow instructions and probably maybe slightly tweak or modify the source code that you end up copying and pasting into your game and stuff like that. But that's kind of it. Like, that is my tip. Get a game engine, create some kind of small project right? Like, have an idea for a small game that you can actually manage realistically by yourself, including doing the art for it, doing all the programming for it, all of that stuff. Pick something small, use a game engine, and then just literally, like, <laughs> literally just Google your way into, like, how to, how, to, how to write code for that engine and how to develop using that engine. Maybe watch some video tutorials that you find on YouTube. Um, you could just bust out some sample projects again and start kind of looking, inspecting them and reverse engineering them. That's also very common. That's really all there is to it. And that's how you can really get started with making games, right? Once you've done your first project, um, you can probably continue on to something maybe a bit more a bit harder, you could probably maybe team up with a friend and say, hey, I know how to use Unity a little, a little bit, I know you do as well, together we could make something a bit bigger. Because like, collaboration is really important for game development, people don't make games alone usually, if you look at any kind of studio, I mean, they're filled with people of different disciplines, you've got artists, you've got designers, producers, engineers, everyone, right? Development directors, stuff like that, right? Because it takes a lot to actually make a game and to manage like all the people and yeah. As I said, I could keep saying this all day, but making games is really hard. So make sure that you're kind of committed to it because it's really hard. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think of, of these kind of vlog type, me talking to the camera. I just, I, I get a lot of questions and I never answer them because the videos I make are just part of kind of series. So I just, I, I kind of, I like the idea of, the, of doing these one-off videos. If you guys have any more questions that you want me to answer, just drop a comment below. I usually read all the comments so that I can see what you guys want to see. And I'm happy to just literally get out of town, head out into the beauty that is outdoors and just literally, we can just hang out. We can just hang out, we can just have a talk and, uh, and yeah, so anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, 
please hit that like button. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. I'm going to be posting a lot of the photos that I take out here on Instagram, so make sure you follow me there and see some sweet photos. But apart from that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Phew.